we're seven and two. We've got uh, it's come down to a three game season. It's uh, you know, and right now we're in position. You know, going into November to be able to control your own destiny and be in the position we're in is good. It's not ideal. It's not perfect, but uh, it's pretty darn good. And we feel like we've got a chance to to still finish uh, and have a very positive season. It's been a very positive season so far, and we just need to finish correctly. And it starts. Uh, in about 10 days against Arizona State down in Tempe. Well, it certainly comes at a, a good time. You know, it could have come a few weeks earlier, I guess ideally. But, uh, you know, we've had nine straight weeks of, uh, of games. And so going in, you know, the position we're in, as I outlined, and going into a, a three-game season, essentially, then the timing is very good in that respect and you know get rejuvenated and, and healed up as best we can in that time frame and then come back and be ready to play uh, Thursday night, week from Thursday night. He's a different guy. I mean, he's uh, since uh, since he's come back out of retirement, he has been a warrior and cannot say enough positive things about Joe and what he's meant to our football team the last three weeks. And I underestimated his ability to carry the ball as much as he's carried it. We just got to play it better. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'm not going to say it is what it is. That's what you're hoping I would say. But <laughs> I, re I refuse to say that. But, but uh, we had our chance to terminate it and uh, missed a tackle, dripped off. Kick wasn't ideal, not quite enough hang time. Uh, it wasn't in the zone we had called for. We, we directional kick, and so we, we expect it to be in a zone. But, you know, the, and the irony is, had we executed that punt, we'd had the best punt day we've had maybe in 15 years here. I mean, it was a phenomenal day punting the ball, except for that last rep, which you can't take back. So that put a damper on an otherwise good, good outing. First of all, their, their toughness and their resiliency, I've used that word over and over throughout this season. And uh, they just, they, they, they don't flinch. I've said that over and over. They just, nothing, nothing uh, to them is insurmountable to our football players. They, they just believe that, that they're in every game and they've, they, uh, they never point fingers. They never get their heads down. They just keep fighting and keep swinging. And so I think that's part of it. Our overall talent level, I think, is another part of it. We're more, we have more depth and more talent now than we've had, in my opinion, since we joined the league. I think that shows up during the course of the game too. We're, we're, we're talented enough to overcome and recover from some of the, some of the adversity we're facing, particularly early in some of the games. That was the best front seven we faced. I'll say that unequivocally as far as how they uh, handle their business, the Huskies and, and their, their schematics and their fits and the, the physicality of how they, uh, you know, the physicality which they play with. And so I think our line did a very nice job. We rushed for 220 plus yards. Joe had another big outing, 170 plus, and so I would say that our offensive line played well, didn't give up a bunch of sacks. You know what we sacked? Well, we sacked at all once or twice. Once the last play, I think it was maybe the last play of the game, might have been the only sack. You get, you, we had one sack, so big sack at that. We were coming. If you watch the tape, we're wide open on a wheel route. If Corey, if we're able to hang onto that ball and throw it, the wheel route is the defender falls down, and the wheel route is a touchdown on the last play, but. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, or second to last play. I'm sorry, not the last play, the second to last play. Recruiting good athletes in the secondary. That's uh, really what it comes down to, guys that, guys that are athletic and have good ball skills. And that combined with a pass rush that gets the quarterback speeding things up and maybe getting rid of the ball either off balance or before he wants to. And so I think it's a combination of those two things. And this is uh, two or three years now in a row that we've had really good production in the secondary with pass breakups and interceptions. I think it was a non-factor, and uh, you know he had a few errant throws early, but then he settled in and, and played well, and and so I don't think there was any. If, if you're asking, was there any neg negative uh, uh, spill, you know, spilling into the game because of the because of that uh, certain situation? No, I don't think there was. I think uh, I think it worked out fine. All the above. We got to give. Uh, Troy an opportunity, particularly earlier in the game, to get some completions. You know, maybe some more quick game stuff. Um, so we got to dial up some more throws. Um, uh, we got to be a little more accurate when we throw. We got to have fewer drops when we on the receiving end. I mean, it's a combination of everybody that's involved. So no one, you're not going. We're not going to identify any one particular facet or area that's uh, responsible. It's just a combination of a bunch of moving parts.
Uh, well, right now we're seventh in the league, which is just shy of half. You know, we're seventh uh, out of 12 teams. And uh, I've said before, I never want to be the least penalized team because that means we're not aggressive enough. And so we play aggressive style of football. Uh, what we want to do is get rid of the ignorant penalties, pre-snap penalties, false starts. That stuff is, has got to be eliminated. And so that's uh, another case in the game. You know, we had some, some movement from their front and stemming around, and we've got to handle it better. We just haven't handled it as well as we should this year. And uh, that's on us, you know, and I don't care what they're saying. You know, we went through that deal with the Arizona game where, where I commented that they were given commands. And, and if they are and they're getting away with it, great, good for them. You know, I wasn't complaining about it. We've got to do a better job handling about it or handling it and making sure that we have an answer. And we still don't have that completely ironed out, as you saw with four, I think it was four false starts on Saturday. There was a there was a lot of disappointed football, uh, players in there and, and frustrated. There was nobody hanging their head. There was nobody uh, feeling sorry for themselves. It was more a feeling of of anger that hey we let this one get away and and uh, you know some resolve in that locker room that hey you know going forward we're gonna you know we we still control our own destiny. We still got a lot of positive things and we got to make the most of that. So that was more rather than in the in the cow locker room it was more just deflating like how you know how could that happen and you know that's. It was a whole different, to me, a whole different feel in the locker room Saturday night or Saturday afternoon. Yeah, I think that's definitely a sign of respect, and that was uh, that was a positive thing to see. And uh, I think it's also a a a, 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 a respectful, uh, you know, towards Washington, you know, Washington Huskies, and how good they are, you know. So I think people understood. You know how you know how good of a football game that was, and how good of an opponent the Washington was, and and how well we played them. So I think that's a combination of all those things.